Hey guys, I'll be using the NASA today. Said that a lot, haven't I? Uh, use number 256. I guess, or did I put another dot? Oh, <laughs> I put it out on the wrong side of the wax. Use 257. Not the wax, but the wax paper. Use 257. And we're going to be putting it in this car of Christopher Bradley. This is a three and a half inch handle. This is the open comb. I did give it a little bit of a polish on the uh, parts of the handle. As well as the top cap. I did not polish the base plates. Just a, not, a, not a mirror polish at all. But I, I like it. All right, this is the open comb, obviously, and I believe it's a C. Yep, C open comb. Got this finest badger from Golden Nib, and it's their super. And I mounted it on a handle that I uh, got at a piff table at a shaving meetup. Let's get that back in the water. It's been soaking for a couple minutes. Let's give it a couple more. And today's soap is Art of Shaving Tallow, a sandalwood scent, and that's the one made by Velabra years ago. And I have uh, kind of made it fit the bottom of this uh, tin and pressed around pieces so that it would uh, fit nicely. It's this long discontinued and... Um, you know, Velabra made the soap, and the scent is just wonderful. Fine Santal Absolute was patterned after this scent. And, uh, and this is just a wonderful soap. It's uh, just not available anymore. It comes in these little shrink-wrapped pucks. And I uh, round on the bottom, you know, to fit in a lot of those old shave bowls. And, oh yeah, just for fun, um, I have... light pennants from Chatillon Lux. This is sticky because it kind of leaked out and stuff at one point. It's a very interesting uh, scent. I like it a lot. All right, let's get my, uh, let's load the blade first then I can get my beard wet. Okay, just to show you the nasset, there's the three dots. And I put those toward the handle each time I shave with this blade, just for curiosity to see how that works out as the blade ages. I usually norm I normally flip blades over. So yeah, this is a high use blade, so it might be different than your usual shaving experience. Okay, that's all loaded up. Less than 24 hours since my last shave, so I don't have big stubble. Okay, I think we're ready to load up. Okay, let's, uh, let's just try a 20 second load from this puck here. It's a it's not a hard soap, but it's a lot harder than a crope. Get rid of much of the water of the brush. Okay, 20 seconds. And there we go. And that's 10 seconds. I haven't used this soap in such a long time. And there's 30. As you can see, got a little airy and foamy, but uh, that's all right. And I'm going to rinse off the threading of the container. The good news is that if this is a scent that interests you, the fine Suntal Absolute 
hits pretty close to this one. And so, you, you, it's just because it's been discontinued doesn't have to be a problem. And the fine performance is terrific. Felt pretty dry as I was working it here the first several seconds, and so I went ahead and added a little bit of water. I haven't used this soap in so long, I, I don't remember the a good load time measurement and all that, you know. So I may have undershot, but we'll just see. You know what? Yeah. See the dryness there? I don't really have too much going on in my brush. So just to be on the safe side, I did use 20 seconds. Lately, perhaps I should have used 20 seconds um, for some of my other hard soaps, but uh, maybe 20 seconds would have been fine if I would have soaked, pre-soaked the puck. All right, let's uh, let's just kind of mix a little bit here. To I add a little bit of water to the to the puck. Okay, so now okay, let's do another ten seconds. And this is kind of a small tub, and so let's let's do a little bit more. So this will be thirty-five seconds of loading total. I can tell it started to get a little little richer, so maybe that's heading back in the right direction. Yeah, that's better. So I added half a teaspoon on top of the soap there right before I did that second load. So now we've got three teaspoons total in the lather. Okay, another teaspoon, so that's four total. Art of shaving is a company that some people like and some people don't. You go into their stores in malls and things like that. Sometimes those guys just aren't much help because they are just, uh, they're populated with people who just don't know very much about shaving in a lot of cases. And so they're given bad advice, things like that. Also, the current line of Art of shaving products just it's kind of low quality for what you pay. Perhaps it's all just the overhead of the physical stores. You know, they're trying to, you know, really pump up the whole idea of vintage 
and shaving and all that. And so they're playing into that. But I mean, maybe it's just the fact that they have to pay so much to keep the physical stores open that they have to overcharge for their products. But for, in the end result is you're, you're paid for something that is, is really kind of a lot for what you get. The performance of the Art of Shaving Creams, it's just it's kind of like Taylor Vol Bond Street and uh, some of those guys, you are really paying more for the name and the quality just isn't quite up to par with a lot of comparable current products. starting to move better now and definitely have plenty of lather at this point. Let's take a feel. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Let's just make sure we get a good mix and we'll shave with this. But this, uh, the vintage stuff, the, it's probably too young to be called vintage, but it's definitely been discontinued now for a few years. This, uh, this stuff was actually very good. Some people will pay $30 for a puck of it since you can't get it anymore. All right, wet my face. some lather. Really enjoy this brush. Now the knot has a good bit of backbone. So I'm very glad that I mounted it high. About as high as I could. So it lets it splay better. Let's it splay more easily. Got these nice soft tips. This might actually be needing a little bit of water, but let's just go with it. It's late and I want to get to bed. So we'll see how the C handles the old Nasset. Carb says that the open comb gives it a little more aggression than the solid bar version. And you can usually apply that same logic to every other model out there. If, it ha if that same model has an open comb version or a solid bar version, but only within that model, you can't compare an open comb, even if it has the same gap, an open comb with a solid bar, unless you've actually used it. If the models are different. Sometimes even among the same manufacturer. All right. Well, that went very well. Very comfortable first pass.
Leather is looking good and seems to be doing its job well. And we'll switch to cross grain now. I had a period where I was having to wait a long time for some stuff and so I whipped up a movie on my tablet. I had the Lord of the Rings series on there. The three movie set, you know. And I was like, I don't really feel like watching that. I didn't really have too much better. Rinse now. Little half rinse. Not getting everything, just kind of re rehydrating my face and just getting the excess off. Some people don't even rinse at all between passes. So I got to see, I got started. I said, well, all right, we'll start watching it. And it's so funny how all it takes is about five minutes of watching and, and then I'm definitely hooked and gonna watch the whole three movie set, you know? Took a few days. But man, I just really enjoyed it. But I was, once you get into that, some stories like that, you, uh, even if you came in kind of a little bit ambivalent, you, you got to finish it. I did pick up something. I've seen it many times. I did pick up something new this time that I didn't get before. So that's always nice. So this is the third pass now. And I, I'm doing cross grain on my cheeks. I do have just a tiny bit of blade feel. But really it's not blade feel. It's uh. It's the sensation of the hairs being cut. I don't really feel the blade. Light touch as always is, is key for me. See, there's a slight slant to what I'm doing right here. That's because the direction of growth is this way. And so by doing a slight slant that way, it gives a uh, slight bit of against the grain nature to the to that angle helps me get a good shave in my neck. Now I'm going to switch the direction from the previous two passes for this section here and go cross grain the other way. And if I need to come back and do this again and relather, that's fine. Matter of fact, what I can do is just so easy. Just grab some lather from the bowl and keep hitting it. And that'll make sure that. We get closeness with a hopefully irritation. One of you guys um, asked me maybe a week ago uh, when why I hadn't used my carve in so long, my Chris Bradley razor, and I replied back, I still love it, one of my favorites, but I uh, I have other razors that I'm walking through with this old blade, and I want to get to those. And, uh, but another reason was I knew that it would be fun to play with the carve with the different base plates. And so I was just waiting around doing some of those other ones first. Then I was going to start to play with the carve and see which uh, base plate would fit me the best with this old blade. And so uh, here we have gotten to that point. I've used many, many of my other razors already with this blade. So the C open comb. It's working just fine right now, so I'll definitely be repeating this once I have kind of a normal amount of blade, blade gro uh, uh, beard growth. So that was very nice. I felt 
the uh, slickness of the soap and the rinses. It's a very nice feel to it. Scent was not super strong during the shave. It's definitely there. Let's just check out the lather. Yeah, see, look at that. It's got some weight to it because of the hydration. This is a beautiful lather. Ha ha, we've lost a brush fiber there. That's all right. It's a new, a new knot. I'm not going to worry about that at all for like 50 shaves, really. That's just a terrific feel to it. Uh, their current, Art of Shaving's current line, I it might be vegan. And I believe the sandalwood scent may have really changed quite a bit. So this is uh, not a buttery slickness, but it's very slick. It's not a heavy, thick slickness, probably because I hydrated it so much. No, no, no. Light buttery. Very light buttery. That tallow kind of helps to helps to come into the play with that. Very nice, luxurious feel. Got a great look to it. Yep. That's what you're going to get with a good tallow soap. Don't get me wrong, there are vegan soaps out there that have really good shave properties and and are, are still very slick in their own right. It's just a different kind of slickness. All right. So, let's check out the result. Oh, yeah, that's, that's good. I like that. It's not absolutely perfect, but... Uh, uh, very close, very close. So this might be a really good blade, the right, uh, the right aggression level for where this blade is in its life. Um, let's say it might be a really good blade. I mean, it might be a really good base plate setting. All right, I'm gonna clean up. And here's the brush after I give it a good rinse. I like to take the bowl and have the water falling into the bowl, and then just uh, work the brush. And so then it's continually rinsing. Then I'll, of course, dump it a few times as we go to it so it gets quickly clean. Um, then once the water's clear, I know we're I know we're done. And these are dense knots. This is not a super dense, super high density, but it's, this is a pretty dense knot. So you have to focus on that interior to make sure that, uh, just watch it, make sure that part gets clean. Then you know you're done. Then I strapped it on a towel, and this is what it looks like. Terrific brush, really Really enjoy the softness, easy display, uh, nature of it, and the uh, fact that as it's working, it does splay uh, well, but it uh, keeps those, it's got enough backbone to where it keeps those tips, those nice, comfortable tips focused at your face. And so that's one of the nice things about a, a Finest Badger that, uh, um, at least in my case, for the backbone that I like to have for those, as long as I mount them really high, and that can usually work out very well. That good combo of, of it holding the tips toward you without being too stiff. All right, so. So there is the, uh, the nasset. And after every shave, just about, if I know I'm not going to be using, if I know I'm going to be traveling or not using the blade in the same razor, then I, just tap it like I'm doing right now on a washcloth, uh, kind of pat, letting it pat dry. We'll clean off the other things in a bit. So it looks like five teaspoons of water was used in this mix, 35 seconds of loading. Yeah, that's right. And I had maybe three passes of lather left. So who knows, I may have been able to pull it off with that uh, 20 seconds of loading. But it was looking a little lean, and I wanted to be sure. Uh, terrific. This size tub is the 4-ounce tub that you can get at Maggard Razors for just a dollar or two. You need to put a little tape on that 
paper label to uh, kind of make it waterproof. But uh, it's a good little size. It's not super big. It's not as big as those Sterling 5.8 ounce uh, or 6 ounce tubs. Um, so you can have a nice collection of these without uh, taking up as much room. The Sterling ones, the larger 6 ounce, do give you more room to work. And so that's a real big benefit. And so if you have the room, I like those big ones too. Oh yeah, my after shave splash. This is some strong stuff. When I had this shipped to me, it smelled up the room that I kept it in right when I got it for like a month. Uh, I would I would come up the stairs into that room and even after sealing the bottle away because I think some had spilled during shipment and so even after sealing the bottle away I could smell it for like a month it's got kind of this candle wick uh, smokiness to it as well as some sweetness and fruitiness it's a really neat story behind this uh, that he's trying to tell behind this scent. Really well put together in my opinion. And the thing is, it, it had arrived. No, it had arrived and the cap was still on it. It was still tight. It was even in a plastic bag inside the shipping container. But it's still such a pungent aroma that I guess some of it had made it out anyway. Um, and I kept smelling it. <laughs> it's definitely a, a divisive scent. There, are Other people in your life may not like it as much as you do. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just going to keep cleaning up gear. Man, I, I'd forgotten I had that in my bag. And so I'm very glad that uh, I saw that earlier today when I was uh, choosing uh, my products. So, yeah. Uh, the sandalwood is this great scent. I don't know that it necessarily works well with this lamplight penance, but it wasn't so strong in, around me that it's interfering now at all. It was pleasant during the shave, kind of low strength during the shave. Uh, four out of ten, three out of ten, something like that in terms of scent strength. I could definitely get a, a good uh, scent of it when I was in my... Uh, when I was in my lather bowl, when I wanted to, you know, get it on purpose, but it didn't really develop this uh, you know, much of a, a kind of a scent cloud around me. So that's, uh, it's, it's, I guess it's weakened over time probably. But, uh, but the performance was, was there. It was very nice. Uh, there are some other soaps that probably perform just a little better, but, but uh, not a lot, not tons of them. And so performance-wise, I think it's terrific. The uh, razor did really well. That might be a, a really good base plate to continue to use with this Nasset. And uh, so maybe I'll hit that another time. The uh, brush, terrific. I told you about that. Uh, so I'm a heavy camper. That's a good shave. And now it's time to go to sleep, go rest. All right, now I sure hope that you got something from this video. Something's here. It's going to help you out. You take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Good night.